Hey everyone, Poindexter here. Today we begin our final week of missions in August, and we'll be performing in some detail the end of the month sequence. First, we need to make a minor correction on the player log sheet. In the last video, I accidentally promoted the fourth fighter group due to my bad math. They are not yet ready for promotion, so I've corrected the numbers accordingly. The fourth group are still at the green skill level, but are very close to promotion. And with that bit of housekeeping out of the way, we're on to our next mission. We receive our weekly allotment of 15 SO points, but since we have two U-boats prowling the sea lanes, we remove six of those points for a final total of nine. This week we'll be going after a secondary mission target, specifically Oil Storage Target 6 in romy sur saint France. Two of our four Oil Target cards are located in Hex 9 an area that has two Luftwaffe squadrons for defense. The good news is that it's also in range of our Spitfire escorts, so there's a good chance that they'll finally be seeing some action today. We're allowed a maximum of three bombers for this target. The target has a plus two air-to-ground modifier, plus the incendiary trait, so we stand a fairly good chance of destroying this target in one mission. Now we'll select our groups. We'll have the 4th Fighter Group flying escort. The 91st Bomb Group will lead the mission, followed by the 97th and the 92nd. We have two bombs left over from last week's mission, so we'll use our 9 SO points to purchase a few more. Three more M44s and one more M43. We now have two SO points remaining which we'll save for next week. We'll load two M44s on the 91st. We'll load the two M43s on the 97th along with an incendiary. And we'll load the remaining two M44s on the 92nd. And we'll place our mission markers on the map. We roll for the Luftwaffe response and the roll is a 4, modified to a 2, a poor response. At this response level, only a maximum of 2 squadrons can attack the group. Hex 9 only has 2 squadrons, so they will both be attacking our flight. Our bombers form up over England and head for France. We draw a target bound event card and we draw occupation resistance. Since we are not playing with the optional intelligence rules, this does not apply and we ignore it. Our groups cross the coast and arrive in the target area. For the first time in the campaign, the Luftwaffe scrambles and rises to meet us in combat. Two squadrons are activated, so we draw two random bandit counters. We draw a no bandit counter and a veteran FW-190. The no bandit counter is discarded, but now our boys are going up against some of the Luftwaffe's best pilots. Our Spitfire group is flying high escort, which negates our bandits out of the sun tactic. Normally, if there were several bandits on the track, we would roll a dice for bandit selection. In the high escort position, a roll of five or greater would give us the opportunity to choose which bandits to attack. Otherwise, we would select the bandits from left to right on the bandit counters track. In this case, 
since there is only one bandit attacking, and we're allowed to intercept two bandits since our fighter group is at full strength. The bandit will enter combat with our fighter escort and will not attack the bombers. Before we resolve combat, let's take a closer look at the bandit counter. We see that this veteran group hits on a modified four or higher, deadly numbers. This bandit also has a durability of two, which means we'll subtract two from our attack rolls. All veteran bandits have the out of the sun tactic, which we have negated by choosing to fly high escort. Finally, this number here designates how many attacks this bandit will conduct on our group. The black box indicates this group was activated in the same hex our groups are currently in. If this bandit was activated from a hex not in the same location as our group, we would flip the counter and use the number in the white box. Only if the Luftwaffe response is high or all out would these outlying hexes activate. Now let's resolve combat. As indicated, this bandit will attack for three turns, so we'll place the combat turn marker on the map to keep track. Normally, our fighter group would be slow. In other words, the bandits would attack first. However, our group is commanded by Anderson, who has the out of the sun tactic with a plus three modifier. This tactic must be used by our fighter group on the first bandit attack turn. As a result, we will attack first with a plus three modifier. Again, we can only use this tactic on the first combat turn. If there is a second or third attack, we revert to the standard combat rules. The fourth fighter group has a plus two modifier in air to air targets, and we add a plus three for the out of the sun tactic. The bandit has a durability of two, which gives us a final total of plus three. The bandit is destroyed on a modified roll of ten or greater. We roll the dice and we roll the ten. No modifiers needed. Our veteran bandit is destroyed and more importantly he is removed from the game. We move our bandits disrupted counter to four. Job done our escorts reach their range limit and turn for home. We flip the two Luftwaffe squadron counters to their rearming side. Since these squadrons were activated in the same hex as our group, they are rotated with the number one at the top. This indicates that these squadrons will become active again after one movement turn. We do not rotate the rearming squadron counters at the end of the over the target step. With the Luftwaffe dealt with, our bomber groups approach their target unscathed. The 91st group will drop first with an overall plus two target modifier. We roll one dice for flat, and we roll a three modified to two for the B-17's durability, and no damage is caused. The group lets loose her bombs. target receives four hits, three from a modified 11 and one from a modified 5. Next up is the 97th. We roll one dice for flat and the group takes a solid hit from a 10 modified to a 9 and the group takes two hits. The 97th will be bombing with a plus one modifier and another plus two for the target area for a final modifier of plus three. The 97th calls bombs away. And the target takes four more hits, two from a modified nine and two from a modified 11. The incendiary misses on a modified four. We need three more hits to destroy the storage facility, and it'll be up to the 92nd to deliver the goods. We roll one dice for flat, 
and the 92nd takes a solid hit with a 9 modified to an 8 from B-17 durability. And the 92nd takes two hits. The 92nd will be bombing with a minus 1, but we add plus 2 for the target with a final modifier of plus 1. The 92nd toggles her bomb load. The target takes four hits, three from a modified eight and one from a modified four. With 12 points of damage, the oil storage facility is destroyed and we receive two victory points. Our groups turn for home and we draw an event card and we draw bonus SO points. Since we destroyed the target, we receive SO points equal to the target's victory points, in this case, two. We now have a total of four SO points. We move our group to Hex 11, and the rearming Luftwaffe squadrons are flipped back to their active status. Fortunately for us, the poor response means they will not be able to attack us again. And we make it back to England once again. It was another successful mission, and we have promotions to award. The fourth fighter group received three points, two for the mission and one for shooting down a bandit, and that promotes them to average. The 91st gains another experience level, thanks to Ray's experience boosting trait, and they are now skilled and the 97th is also promoted to average. Our current victory point total sits at nine. Looking at the campaign results, it's clear that we've barely made a dent in the overall score, but we've got four months to go, and this score will get better as we bring in more groups. We have one more mission to perform, and that's the anti-submarine mission. The 93rd group did well last week, destroying one of the U-boats. Let's hope they will be as successful this week. Remember, there is no plotting of waypoints on this particular mission. We simply roll one dice for each U-boat. On a modified roll of seven or greater, we destroy the target. Since the 93rd still has a minus one air-to-ground stat, we'll need to roll an eight or better. We roll two dice, and we roll a 10 and a 1. The 10 is a hit, and another U-boat is destroyed. The 93rd receives two experience points, one for the mission and one for destroying the U-boat. And we receive two more victory points for destroying another U-boat, for a total of 11. We now roll for the target damage check for Airfield 14. If we roll a 6 or greater, the airfield will be completely repaired. We roll a 9, and the airfield is now undamaged. We move the calendar marker to month end, and that concludes our missions for this week. We're now at the end of August, and we'll begin our end of the month steps. First, we evaluate the status of any secondary missions, if any. Secondary missions last for two months. In the case of our oil campaign missions, we have destroyed two of the required seven victory points. As we have finished our first month and the conditions have not yet been met for the completion of these missions, we move the mission card to the secondary target slot or the second month slot. We have until the end of September, our new month, to complete these objectives, or else we will suffer the penalties indicated on the card. Next up are the German defense adjustments. Battles in the Mediterranean and the USSR were happening at the same time as the war in Europe. Flying Fortress leader simulates the struggles of these fronts by rolling for war front adjustments. For each theater, we roll a die 
adding any modifiers, to advance or retreat these theaters. In this case, there are no theater modifiers, so the theaters will advance on a roll of nine or greater, or retreat on a roll of two or less. We'll roll for the Mediterranean theater first, and we roll a 10. We advance the Med Theater from Torch to Morocco. Now we'll roll for the USSR. And we roll a 1, a retreat. Since the USSR is already at its minimum starting position, it remains at Stalingrad. Now we'll select the number of new Luftwaffe squadrons to place on the map. We choose the amount equal to the number of current supply points, in this case, seven. The next step is to deploy our new squadrons to each theater. For me personally, this was one of the most confusing things to decipher in the rulebook, but thanks to BoardGameGeek.com, I found the answers for correct deployment. Because of that, I'm going to go through these steps in great detail. Now. Before we start rolling for placement, we need to look at our Luftwaffe commander. Schroer has a Western Deployment Focus plus one modifier, which means that we'll add plus one to all of our die rolls, meaning the chances of these new squadrons being deployed to the European theater are a bit higher. Let's talk about these numbers in the Luftwaffe theater deployment. As you can see, all 10 numbers have their own individual spaces. On a die roll of one, we would automatically place one squadron into the Luftwaffe reserve pool. Now let's go back to the theater deployment. The Med Theater is currently in Morocco. At the bottom of this area, we see Luftwaffe one. This indicates the number of spaces to be allocated when rolling for squadron placement in the Mediterranean theater. Morocco has one, so we allocate one space. Since a one is an automatic Luftwaffe reserve roll, a two would be the result for placement in the Mediterranean theater. To put a finer point on this, let's say the Med Theater placement was in Algeria, where it shows Luftwaffe two. In that case, we would allocate two spaces for Med deployment a one for the automatic Luftwaffe reserve, and a two and three for the med theater. Remember, it's the number of spaces allocated to the die roll for that particular theater. Because of Schroer's plus one modifier, however, there is no chance of any squadron being deployed to the Luftwaffe reserve, as all die rolls will be two or greater. Looking at the USSR theater, we see Luftwaffe 2 at the bottom of Stalingrad. This means two spaces will be allocated for the USSR rolls, in this case, three and four. Any roll of five or higher will be allocated to the European theater. Let's begin rolling for placement. Our first roll is a six, modified to a seven which means we'll place a squadron in the European theater. The second roll is a four, modified to five, and this squadron will also go to the European theater. Our third roll is a three, modified to four. This squadron will go to the USSR. The fourth roll is an eight, modified to nine, another for the European theater. The fifth roll is a one, modified to two, and this squadron goes to the Mediterranean theater. The sixth roll is a five, modified to six, and this squadron goes to Europe. And our last roll is a seven, modified to eight, and this squadron also heads to Europe. Out of the seven new squadrons, five will be heading to Europe. Now we'll roll for the placement of these five new squadrons on the strategic map. After rolling for placement, this is where the new squadrons are located. 
as Hex 15 is considered a critical hex for German defense and is not guarded. We'll move one squadron from Hex 16 to Hex 15. All German critical hexes are now covered. Now we check for any German technologies that may be active or about to become active. As this campaign has no technologies, German or otherwise, we skip this part of the monthly phase. German defense commanders can be periodically replaced with new commanders. We'll roll one dice for replacement. For Schroer, if the result is an 8 or higher, he will be replaced. And we roll a 4, and Schroer remains in command. Now we check for any group reassignments. If the modified die roll equals or exceeds the reassigned number, the group is transferred out and permanently removed from the game. As none of our groups are of high enough skill, there is no reassigned number present, and they will remain with us for the next month. Based on the campaign sheet, we receive 12 monthly replacement points. These points are used to repair groups that were damaged during the month. After adding up all of the damage markers present on our groups, the final total is 11. So, all of our damaged groups are back to full strength once again. Any excess replacement points cannot be carried over into the next month. We could also spend SO points as replacement points if needed. One SO point is equal to two replacement points. Finally, we'll need to build any destroyed factories. As we have a build marker present, we'll draw a new factory target card. The factory adds two supply points, so we'll place a two supply marker on the aircraft factory monthly output. We adjust the calendar to our new month, and the end of the month phase is complete. That concludes our first month of combat operations in B-17 Flying Fortress Leader. The Luftwaffe's strength is expanding on the continent, and our future missions will see more of their presence as a result. However, starting next month, we'll also be adding more bomber groups into the mix, which means we have the potential to fly more missions per week. German strength may be growing, but ours is as well. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk again soon.